Hey guys, it's White Manga here, and today I've animated myself. There was a period where everybody was kind of doing the Tune Me challenge where you kind of draw yourself. A lot of people had fun with that, and maybe I'll do a video at some point that's just that. But I also wanted to do something a little different. We haven't animated in a while. A lot of people liked the animation tutorials that I did on this channel, so why not? We opted for something not too crazy, simple, and be able to knock it out in less than 24 hours. Showing you guys some nice tricks on how you can animate in Clip Studio Paint. So while this is a how-to animate, it's not gonna be as detailed as the other how-to animate tutorials that I've done in the past that go in great detail. I highly recommend you watch those videos and it will help you greatly understand what's happening in this video. If you need to, if not, you can just watch this for the fun. But first, I've partnered up with Skillshare to bring this video to you, trying to make 2021 a big year where you explore and deepen your already existing passions. Like art, animation, sequential art, and all that kind of stuff. You can get lost in that creativity with Skillshare's online classes. Good chance that what you find on there would inspire you or surprise you, or both. Skillshare's online community offers a lot of meaning to your membership. With so much to explore, projects to create, support you can get and give back from other creatives as you both learn, Skillshare offers real growth, offering classes for real life and furthering your creative journey without putting your life on hold. Short classes to fit your busy schedule ranging from animation to art to comics to cooking to you name it. Not just saying that for the vid, there's classes I've taken in the past that I learned from and classes that I find interesting even now, like this character illustration, drawing faces, figures, and clothing by Gabriel Piccolo. It's a comic artist, illustrator, and he shares his tips on how to improve your drawings, your figure drawings, clothing drawings, and all that good stuff. And the warrior guys, compared to in-person classes and workshops, Skillshare is very affordable. And the first 1,000 people to use my link in the description get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. You're welcome. So first we came up with the audio and the audio kind of helps us decide how the animation is going to be, what mouth poses to use and when to use them and stuff like that. It's almost like the first blueprint of the whole animation. What's being said, well, you guys are here it again. You know, something light, funny, easy to do. Let's go. Next is to create the keyframes based on that audio. And I'm just sketching the frames that I need and assigning them to certain cells. Here we're using Clip Studio Paint. So again, there's a video that goes into more detail as to what's going on. But essentially we create an animation folder and we have cells on that animation folder paced out throughout the timeline and each cell is kind of linked to a layer on the layer window and that layer is essentially the sketch and then showing what's on the cell based on what's linked to right now we're just focusing on the keyframes and those are like the major frames that are going to be shown and then we'll kind of focus on the in-betweens afterwards so now i'm just trying to draw <laughs> a face that has a little bit of a likeness to mine it's always been difficult. I wonder, I wonder if you guys kind of have the same issue sometimes. One of the toughest things to draw is yourself, uh, at least without reference. But um, here, I did look a little bit at some of my photos just to make sure everything is on point, even though I've seen my face since the beginning of time as I know it. But I'm trying to make it look as close as I can while still having it look anime-ish or at least you know like a cartoon not you know, not too realistic you guys can let me know if you you know think it looks accurate or if you guys have the same issue for the animation again like i said we're going to keep it really basic something kind of reminds me of like a gintama teacher vibe where it's really just standing still a couple hand motions here and there and just mouth movements for the most part maybe talking to somebody off screen so it's less animation if you watch gintama just several moments where you see stuff like that where you're clearly saving money budget and all of that so the animation is limited but the characters are you know kind of funny and so they break the fourth wall and talk about that all the time or how the animators kind of are on vacation or something like that um, it's so many, one of the funniest anime I've ever encountered, period, right? Uh, you guys definitely check that out. But getting advice from there, very limited in-betweens and all that kind of stuff to put this together. I want a character to have a lot of range as well. So we're going to have some expressions that are cooler or weird. They're not necessarily chibi, but maybe a little humorous to a degree uh, so that everything is not completely still. Just to have a little fun while not going too overboard and too crazy. The cool thing is with these sketches, you can kind of move things around and clip to your paint so you don't have to draw the whole thing all over again. And then in this new cell or this new layer, you're really just 
maybe changing a few things here and there, but for the most part, uh, it's the it's the same set of lines. Here I'm kind of just making sure that the words and the mouth kind of look like they match what's being said. Usually it looks less so in anime, where these shows kind of have to be pumped out week to week in some cases. The mouth movements are not exactly always perfect, except for when the character is yelling or something like that. Versus Western animation where they really try to make sure the lip syncing is on point. Japanese stuff, not so much except for certain cases. Now just testing it out, make sure everything goes smoothly. Kind of have to scrub the timeline sometimes just to see how things look and make sure everything is on point. Because in this phase, you want to be prepared enough to then go into doing the line art and then from the line art, you then form the in-betweens. At least that's the approach I'm doing here. For most studios, most animators, they have their own approach. So I highly recommend you guys do a lot of research and see a lot of approaches to doing animation before you settle on one that works for you. And then putting in the line art, it's pretty basic. I wanna make sure I'm using vector lines as well because they're easier to work with within Clip Studio Paint. They're easier to erase with a vector eraser. Vector lines in general are just a better approach to animating versus using raster layers. Again, if you don't know the difference between a raster layer and a vector layer, I have that video that goes into more detail about all this kind of stuff. Here, I'm just putting in the lines. Some of it's not gonna be 100% perfect, but hey man, we do what we can. And then here, adding the in-betweens, there's something called the onion skin. It kind of lets you know what cell comes before and after, so you kind of have a good idea of what to draw in between. Onion skin is on with the in-betweens. You can kind of see where you can draw in between. And it's only going to be on screen for like one or two frames. So it doesn't even have to be like super duper accurate. It just needs to be enough to show that transition from the first frame or the frame prior to the next, or at least the cell prior to the next. And for some of those in-betweens, they'll look like really weird and warped. And those will be based on the 12 principles of animation. Maybe I'll do a video that goes into the details of those 12. But as you can see, I'm kind of drawing this weird drawn out motion for the character. It kind of doesn't make sense. It's almost like I'm stretching it out. And these are part of the things you learn when it comes to the 12 principles. Sometimes it gives the illustration that really nice, swift motion. If you pause your anime or most of your shows in the right moment, especially when you're doing something fast, you will kind of see some of the stuff. The cell behind is in red and the cell in front is in green. There are settings in Clip Studio Paint where you can actually go in and change the colors. So a lot of things are changeable, editable, it's all up to you. More in-between stuff with this, I guess, funny-ish face while well, partially blinking. Again, doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, but I just felt like while scrubbing through the timeline that an extra frame was needed. So we're just gonna slip it in here. So, so sometimes you kind of have to be playing your animation while you're making it so you can kind of test and see if it's going smoothly or not and then make adjustments where necessary. Now I'm just adding in the color flats. Animation can be a little tedious, but you know, put the work in and you should be good. I'm adding the color flats and doing some cleanup to make sure everything looks accurate. With the color flats, there are a lot of tools in Clip Studio Paint that allow you to just add in the colors very easily. You have several options with the fill tool. And if you're using vector lines, if you fill the vector path, there are options to fill the vector path so that when you're filling in the layers, it's less likely to have those little tiny dots of space that don't get filled in. If you guys use the fill tool, you kind of know what I'm talking about. And then while working, you're scrubbing the timeline to make sure that Everything's clean, no missing gaps, do clean up when necessary, make sure things are in the right layers. And then we end with the shading. Here I'm kind of shading directly on the drawing. I'm not doing the cell shading type of shading. It's still shell shading, but the traditional way of doing it is using vector lines to just kind of create the lines that will be filled in for the shadows. It's easier to animate those lines versus just these blobs, but I'm just going with the blobs since the animation is pretty simple, straightforward, my character's not moving that much. Animation overall can be hella tedious. With several departments, maybe someone working on backgrounds. I'm not even gonna bother with that here. I think the white background is actually on brand with the way I've kind of been working on this channel visually. What I plan to do with these animations is maybe as time goes on, I kind of keep adding to them and you know adding more expressions and like mouth movements and things like that and then have those kind of videos where you kind of have the 
anime, animated me and like an avatar of me kind of doing it, which would be kind of cool because it's like a straight up anime doing it versus uh, just picture, picture, and picture, to picture, and picture. Here you can actually see some movement, but it might be a pain. And again, we do more cleanup. We play the video back and forth to make sure everything is on point. In Eclipse Video Paint, you can have the audio on the timeline. So that way you can really time things out perfectly. After that, you export. There are many ways to export. So GIF, GIF, whatever you, want to, whatever you want to export it as. But here we're going to export it as a movie file, as an MOV file. And then do Final Editing in Final Cut Pro. Sometimes you can do compositing and editing in After Effects or stuff like that. It's really up to you what you want to do. But in this case, you didn't need much of that. And after that, we're done. All right, guys. This is actually a pretty difficult video to put together in such short notice. So why don't you all do me a favor? How about you hit that subscribe button, that like button, and leave a comment? Otherwise, I'll be forced to do something you don't want me to do. You what? Hmm? What will happen? Look at me! Look at me! Sir! Hmm? What will happen? Hmm? Nothing. This is what I thought. For the two and a half people that made the end of this video, I thank you. Don't forget to like this video. Holy Ghost, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. Follow me on all social media. Links to everything you could possibly need will be in the description below. Leave comments if you have any questions. I'll get to as many as I can. Socials where you can get Apple Black, my manga, publishing serialized on Saturday AM. Check out more videos. It's White Manga, and I'm Audi 9000.